Now to the latest on the Lori Vallow trial. It took a surprising turn today when the mom accused of killing her two children asked to be excused from the courtroom. The request came amid graphic testimony about the day the victims' bodies were found. Tonight, we have team coverage. Our Morgan Romero spoke to a local criminal defense attorney about Vallow's request and how unusual it was. But we begin with Shira Matsuzawa, who was in the courtroom as that tough testimony today played out. It was an extremely emotional day in court today. Not only did we hear graphic details of what happened, we also saw photos. And this morning, we were there as Larry Woodcock, JJ's grandfather, arrived at court. It's going to be a hard day, I think. But, uh, uh, you know, we will see. Uh, we're all ready for it. As you just heard, Larry was already preparing himself for what he was about to hear today, and rightfully so. Rexburg Police Detective Ray Hermosillo took the stand. He talked about working with Gilbert Police in this case in Arizona. From there, he was part of the search for the kids in Rexburg. He also went to Hawaii after Rexburg Police tracked Lori and Chad there. But perhaps one of the toughest parts of his testimony came as he talked about serving a search warrant at Chad Daybell's house on June 9th, 2020. Hermosillo went into excruciating detail about the state in which JJ and Tylee were found on that day nearly three years ago. As we reported, their remains were found on Vallow's husband, Chad Daybell's property in Rexburg. And for the sake of this broadcast, we are not going into as much detail, but you can read more about it at KTVB.com. Today, the prosecution showed photos of the property and the children's remains as Hermosillo explained what led up to that discovery. And one of the most difficult moments in today's testimony happened when the prosecution showed photos of JJ's autopsy. Another big moment in today's trial, Vallow's attorneys asked if Vallow would be excused or could be excused from today's proceedings. They cited her fragile state of mind and mental health, but the judge denied her request. He said, quote, her presence can and should be required to ensure her due process rights and a fair trial. Our Alexandra Duggan was inside the courtroom when those photos were shown. She says Larry Woodcock, JJ's grandfather, was hunched over and in tears. In Boise at the Ada County Courthouse, Shira Matsuzawa, Idaho's News Channel 7. As Shira mentioned, Vallo asked to leave the court for the rest of the day after lunch, but the judge said no. She looked very upset, and she and her defense attorneys, the prosecution, and the judge left the courtroom multiple times to talk privately. We wanted to know how unusual that is. Morgan Romero asked criminal defense attorney and former Idaho Attorney General David Leroy that very question. Morgan, explain a little more about what happened today. Well, Doug, it's safe to say what happened in court today was odd. Reporters who were in the courtroom, including our Alexandra Duggan and East Idaho News' Nate Eaton, say Vallo started the day laughing and smiling with her attorneys, behavior we've seen in previous hearings before this trial. But then come lunchtime, after they came back, Vallo's mood was completely different. Everyone was warned evidence shown this afternoon would be graphic, as Shira explained. But after lunch and before the jury was allowed back in, Vallo looked upset and one of her attorneys asked the judge if he could meet with her in private. So the court took another break as Lori met with her attorneys in a private hallway. Prosecutors and the judge also left and met with the defense team. When they all came back about half an hour later, Lori looked upset. Around 2 p.m., Vallo's defense attorney said she wanted to waive her right not to be there for the rest of the afternoon. He said it was an emotional morning and she has fragile mental health. Dave Leroy says while Vallo is required to be in trial, criminal defendants do have the right to ask to not be there for parts of trial. But Leroy says if they're removed, it's usually because a judge kicked them out for being too unruly. Ultimately, as Shira talked about, the judge did require her to stay. And the rest of the afternoon while she was inside that courtroom, as pictures of her son JJ's remains were shown, Vallo looked down. The defendant does have the right in the courtroom to take a time out if they're physically ill, uh, if they're not composed, uh, if they're distraught or having other difficulties, uh, or if they need to communicate something uh, directly and privately to their counsel. So timeouts are not unusual, breaks are accorded, reasonable breaks need to be had from time to time. Uh, but to have repeated breaks, uh, to have them unresolved, to have a request for removal from the courtroom voluntarily uh, is very atypical, and the judge has handled it in a way th that hopefully makes a record that this does not become an appellate issue or a continuing situation for either the defense or the prosecution. 
Yeah, again, saying what played out in court today was very unusual. Leroy says attorneys from both sides see all the evidence the other side plans to present in their case ahead of trial, and the defense is obligated to show their client all the evidence as well, meaning Vallow likely saw the photos before today. Leroy doesn't think Vallow's reaction was staged or that her attorneys told her to get emotional. We've been seeing some of that reaction on social media. He says defense attorneys work with their clients, in fact, to not show any emotion ever. I'll have more insight from Leroy tonight on the News at 10. Doug? It's been interesting to see like the, the, the judicial lesson through all of yes. this and how these things play out. So Morgan, thanks for explaining that you bet. with the help of Dave Leroy. And if you want more behind the scenes coverage of the trial, check out our YouTube streaming show called Lori Vallow Inside the Courtroom. A new episode is up online right now talking about opening arguments and the first two witnesses called to the stand. You can also get our complete coverage on KTVB.com.